Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I want to say I'm very happy to be here. Um, before I begin, I want to thank the Bibliographical Society of Canada for awarding me the Graduate Student Merit Award. I specifically want to thank Chris Cornish, who was incredibly friendly and helpful for my work on this presentation. This presentation is um, part of my PhD research um, uh, in progress on the history of the politics of zine culture. Zines are small circulation self-published booklets or periodicals mainly distributed in alternative circles in the margins of the dominant cultural and the public uh, publishing fields. They have been associated with radical politics since the late 1970s as they became the symbol of punk publishing. Uh, they have also generated a considerable literature in bibliographical studies since the 1990s. Um, like any sphere of cultural activity and production, zine culture is structured by a variety of institutions. They vary greatly in mission, scope, and organization. We find, for instance, uh, zine fairs and festivals, the most important in Canada being CanZine, based in Toronto, and uh, ExpoZine in Montreal. Uh, zine prizes also usually organized by the same, same fairs and festivals. There are also magazines publishing news, reviews, and feature articles like uh, Brunsel, uh, Broken Pencil, uh, also based in Toronto. Uh, there are also distributors of varying size, usually headed by zine authors or publishers. And finally, there are uh, zine archives and zine libraries uh, found in, large, in a large variety of settings. Today, I want to focus on uh, archives and libraries, not only because of the occasion, uh, but because zine librarians have generated a substantial literature on zines and zine politics, although their political role is underrepresented in the literature on the politics of zine culture. My goal here is first to present the diversity of zine libraries and collections. Um, second, to identify the political ramifications of the work of zine librarians. And third, to briefly introduce how they have themselves uh, argued for the political relevance of their work. But first, I want to quickly specify what I mean here by politics. Uh, I mostly refer to Chantal Mouffe and her theory of politics and the political. Roughly, I use Mouffe to define politics as conflict over how the, so the social world is and uh, how it ought to be. Um, it, this definition involves uh, playing with a range of actors and positionalities, uh, each opposing one another in their views on how things uh, should be organized. I also, want, I also add that conflict can be horizontal, opposing uh, equal or rival uh, alternatives, or vertical, opposing actors across hierarchy lines. Here I consider the politics of zine culture in two ways. First, I read zine culture and zine institutions as sites of political conflict. Uh, over the identity and organizing of the zine world. And second, I consider zine culture's positioning within the broader social world and its attempts to transform it. Zine libraries and archives come in different forms. Some are little grassroots community organizations, while others are housed in major public or academic libraries. In a 2013 article, Sarah Baker and Alison Huber developed uh, the concept of DIY institution to describe community archives and museums. They also identify a continuum of DIY institutions that I quote, uh, begins with the individual collector who seeks to establish a place to share their collection all the way through to the DIY institution that might have found enough funding for a, new staff, for a few staff members and has become formalized to the extent that it is on the verge of official national acceptance. Of course, a position in this continuum can change over time. Um, institutions like uh, Archive Montreal, for example, founded in 1998, now a major structuring force 
uh, in Montreal's Zane scene started as little more than a pooling of personal collections and has now attained some form of national acceptance as a collaborator of uh, Quebec's National Library and Archives. Since my focus here is not only on DIY institutions, um, I want to include zine collections in public and academic libraries at the latter end of this continuum. I consider, for an example, uh, librarians working at the periodicals collection or at the artists' book, books and uh, bibliophile books collection, the two distinct collections holding zines in Quebec's National Library, as uh, also important institutional actors of Montreal's zine scene. Their vision of the local zine culture and their perception of their own role within it can, of course, be at odds with those of some other actors, for instance, those whose activity does not extend beyond the zine scene. Um, this is the kind of political conflict over the organization and value of zine culture I want to emphasize here. Um, concretely, then, the politics of zine institutions is made of multiple intertwined power relations and possibly conflicting views on zine culture. You have, for instance, conflicts opposing zinesters and institutions. Uh, some zinesters, um, for example, associated with the riot girl punk feminist movement of the 1990s were known to oppose public archives and libraries holding copies of their publications. A conflict can also oppose zinesters between themselves over institutional matters. Uh, many reflection essays can be found in zines in which the institutionalization of zine culture is argued upon. For example, a text published in uh, L'Attac, Volume 9, uh, an important collective zine published by the Coop Coutirif in Montreal, uh, a text titled zine, uh, zine et Valorisation de la Radicalité, or Zines and the Value or Promotion of Radicalism, portrayed debates within the scene and within the collective itself over the importance of exposing and its effect on the local zine culture and its politics. There's also a conflict between zine actors within institutions or between uh, uh, institutional actors themselves. For instance, some smaller DIY institutions might be in conflict with not national public or academic libraries over their discrimination of radical or unconventional or non-professional publications. For example, Louis Rastelli, zine organizer and founder of Archive Montreal, uh, sometimes has less than nice words about Quebec's National Library and Archives, even if the two institutions often collaborate. Another example would be conflict within the same institution. For, for instance, zine librarians within public or academic institutions have reported uh, having conflicts with some of their colleagues. Uh, this is especially true as zine librarians have developed its own, uh, zine librarianship has developed its own et ethical guidelines over time, uh, and it's sometimes at odds with the standard librarian practice. I see these different instances as related to zine politics because every time what is at stake is the definition and the shaping of zine culture and its place within uh, cultural and political debates. Um, the political ramifications of zine librarianship have uh, evolved over the last decades. Uh, the first zine collections were created in public and academic libraries in the early 1990s. Uh, in 1992, Mike Gunderloy, uh, editor of the wide circulating review zine Pack Cheat 5, donated his personal zine collection an estimated uh, 10,000 titles to the New York State Library. Around that time, the first zine librarians have produced an accompanying literature that focused on two main ideas. First, um, arguing for the relevance of zines for research, especially for the cultural history of the late uh, 20th century. Uh, Chris Dodge, um, member of the advisory committee of the Alternative Press Center and then uh, cataloger at the Hennepin County Library in Minnesota, argued in the Wilson Library Bulletin that, I quote, uh, future researchers will rely on materials like zines for evidence of cultural dissent and innovation in the late 20th century. 
uh, Zen librarians have also, uh, this is the second point, tried to convince Zinsters to trust them. Uh, Catherine de Graff, head of special collections at the DePaul University Library in Chicago, argued that even though she understood zine makers' reticence to have their publications included in library collections, it was, uh, to her opinion, the duty of librarians to convince them otherwise. Um, additional discussions uh, over the understanding of the zine phenomenon and especially on the way to understand zines in regards to the history of alternative and radical print culture were, were also important topics in uh, scholarship in the 1990s. We then see a new generation of uh, zine librarians uh, more interested in straightforward political questions. Uh, they get their inspiration from the work of librarians and scholars like Sanford Berman of the same Hennepin County Library and uh, James Danke from the Wisconsin Historical Society. Jenna Friedman, a founder of the Barnard Zine Library at Barnard College in New York, is a good example of this new generation. Um, these, zine librarians these zine librarians have been very influential for contemporary zine culture. They promoted the idea of a zine librarian community within zine culture. They uh, also organized an annual on conference uh, for zine librarians since uh, 2009 and are currently working to develop an international interlibrary zine catalog connecting uh, zine collections uh, be between libraries. Compared to zine librarianship of the 1990s, uh, their approach is characterized by first the creation of zine specific collections rather than sub collections within periodicals or alternative or radical publishing collections and so forth, um, at least in some cases something that was not uh, existing yet before. Second, uh, they are characterized by their interest in political uh, zine culture, mostly, zine, uh, mostly queer feminist or anti-racist zines and zines by black indigenous and artists of color. Um, and third, they challenge the idea of liberal neutrality in librarianship, referring notably to Denki, uh, and his work, many zine librarians of this generation are in favor of a more politically informed approach to uh, zine librarianship. Their approach, uh, it, it's the approach that led to the creation of the Zine Librarian Code of Ethics in 2015. At uh, the attention to librarians who don't know about zines and uh, to uh, zine librarians who don't know about uh, librarianship. Here I paraphrase uh, librarians Jenna Friedman and Rhonda Kaufman from a uh, 2013 book chapter. Uh, maybe more importantly for my argument, the Code uh, of Ethics, the Zine Librarian Code of Ethics, proposes to draw from queer theory and feminist radical and critical pedagogy in addition to theory from library and archival science. The uh, ethics code does not uh, does a lot to empower zine creators in face of a rapidly growing zine librarianship. Uh, zine collections were found in at least 113 public and academic libraries in the U.S. alone, according to a, a uh, according to a 2018 article by Anne Hayes. The creation of the ethics code is, uh, of course, important in. Um, the recent history of zine librarianship and its relation uh, to uh, zine politics. Um, however, I want to argue uh, to conclude that um, conflict cannot be completely resolved by ethical guidelines. Uh, what's more, I think that opposing views between the multiple actors of zine culture are fundamental to uh, the future of its relationship to politics. A, um, in my opinion, a thorough understanding of the politics of zine culture thus goes beyond the politics of zine practice to include institutions and institutional actors like librarians and archivists, but it also goes beyond ethics and addresses conflicting perspectives and interests within zine culture over what it is and what it ought to be. Um, I don't want to overemphasize uh, internal conflict over social change and political activism. 
Uh, however, I think that um, the specificity of zine politics and what it can bring to contemporary political struggles must uh, be rooted in zine culture itself, its actors, uh, its organization. Um, in this sense, uh, a fair understanding of the power relations and conflicts within zine culture can be part of its original contribution to uh, contemporary con uh, political debates.